And my name is Richard Gosdick, or most people know me as Richard the Lion. And today we are doing an exceptional um, piece of session or some work this morning on a guide that will help you in becoming a successful entrepreneur as long as you're a motivated individual in a home-based business. A lot of us are looking to do that today. And what I have with us today is a guest who is very um, well seasoned. He's one of, he's been a mentor of mine for the last two years. He didn't even know it until I told him about it in, uh, at a Gold Pro Recruiting Mastery event in, in, in Vegas last year. And this gentleman here has over 20 years experience in the network marketing arena in the home-based business. He's written a best-selling book called The Unemployed Millionaire. He has The Unemployed Millionaire Show. He's built teams of close to a million people, and he's had incredible success. His name is Matt Morris. And Matt, would you please share with us right now your quick story? Yeah, I would love to. And first off, just uh, want to thank you for inviting me on your uh, on your hangout here. And you know, you got to let everyone know one of the biggest keys I think to uh, being successful in business is you know having a mentor, someone that you can work with. And uh, you know, if you're watching this, chances are you're part of Richard's team, and so you got to realize you are very blessed to be working with him. Uh, just the you know short chance we've gotten to know each other. Uh, very few people are as committed as him, and you know he just wants to see every everyone succeeds, super hard worker, really knows the game. And so um, realize you're, uh, you're in good hands with him. So um, yeah, you know, my quick story, I got involved in, uh, in network marketing actually when I was 18. I was um, working as a banquet waiter at a hotel and one night I had a really cute waitress that um, you know as we were bringing dishes in and things like that she kept initiating conversation with me and uh, at one point she said do you, uh, you ever think about having uh, being in business for yourself and uh, you know I wanted to build rapport with her so I said yeah all the time actually and she said well, why don't you write your number down we'll talk business sometime and I was like Love to talk business, so I gave her my number, <laughs> and um, she uh, called me a couple days later and said, "Hey, why don't you meet me at the Hilton Hotel one night? We can talk business." And I was like, "All right, business hotel night, I'm in." So I, um, you know, showed up, and unfortunately, it was uh, a network marketing meeting. So <laughs> you know, I came into a room of 100 people, and a guy got up and he shared uh, the concept of leverage and uh, being able to create time freedom and not having to have a traditional business and all that. And I just, you know, I, flat, I got excited because I thought I was going to go the corp, have to climb the corporate ladder and, you know, work for the next 40, 50 years of my life. And so it just opened up my, my mind to a whole different world of possibilities. And so I, uh, you know, started going to all the trainings. I went to the meetings and after my first two years with that company, I, uh, I sponsored three people and uh, worse because two of those I, I paid for to get in and uh, it actually gets worse because one of those that I paid for to get in, um, I never even told them they were in. I enrolled my mom and never even told her. So I didn't even have the confidence to tell someone I paid their way in. So I was, you know, not the best network marketer and, uh, you know, didn't get a whole lot better after that. I uh, joined another company and didn't have success. I joined another company, didn't have success. Another company, I didn't have success. Uh, long story short, I ended up, uh, at one point, I actually joined a uh, kind of a non-networking company and um, just opened up an office. I did all the supposed to do I spent money on all kinds of crazy advertising and uh, 21 years old I found myself $30,000 in debt I was living at home with my mom she said uh, you know you're adult enough to pay uh, you're adult enough to have your own business you're adult enough to drop out of college and adult enough not to have a job so you're also adult enough to pay me rent so pay me rent or move out at the end of the month and so I had no money. I had negative money at the time. So I uh, took a job selling above ground swimming pools in southern Louisiana in the two hottest months of the year. And I uh, couldn't afford a motel or an apartment or anything like that. So I just lived out of my car. I had this beat up red Honda Civic. And I would uh, bathe in gas station bathrooms. Uh, it was just a fascinating experience in my life. I, uh, I kind of woke up one night. Um, 
so to speak. <laughs> I had my defining moment. I was um, in this church parking lot and I, I would always park in church parking lots because I felt like a criminal would feel guilty carjacking me in a church. <laughs> so I, uh, I'm laying in my seat. It's pouring down rain. Normally the rain would help me sleep, but that night I cannot fall asleep. And some of you have probably guessed why. The reason why I can't sleep is because I can smell myself. It, <laughs> I stunk. It had been a couple days. And so, you know, I look out, it's raining outside. So I took off all my clothes. I got out in the middle of the church parking lot with nothing but a bar of soap and, you know, showered naked in a church parking lot. And, you know, <laughs> um, I'm so grateful. I kept a journal of my experience. And that night I actually journaled my experience. And, you know, I just realized, you know, I'm 21, I'm homeless, living out of my car, $30,000 in debt. I'm lonely. I don't have any friends where I'm, you know, living. <laughs> um, don't have any career options. You know, this selling swimming pools door to door is not going to go anywhere. So I just, you know, woke up. They say there's two motivators in life. There's the desire for pleasure and then the avoidance of pain. And you can guess which one is bigger. It's the avoidance of pain. And so I guess I finally had enough pain um, you know, they say when the pain of remaining the same outweighs the pain of change, uh, then one will change. And so the pain was great enough. And I remember writing in my journal, I just said, Matt, you know, I'm going to commit, do whatever it takes to achieve success, do whatever it takes to change my financial future. And, you know, that was the beginning of what I would call my reinvention process. And uh, it's just, it definitely was a heck of a journey. I've never had any, you know, uh, like I, ha I was never an overnight success. It took me five years to get to a full-time income, five years to get full-time in network marketing. And so, um, you know, Richard, I see what you've done. You know, your story is amazing. 34 months in, uh, in, in you know, the profession and you're already just knocking the ball out of the park. So congratulations, you're way, way ahead of where I was. So, you know, I know a lot of people have maybe been in for six months or a year or something like that, a couple of years, and you just feel like you're banging your head against a wall. And so, you know, I can definitely relate to that because it was like year after painful year after year where I was so frustrated, so pissed off at myself and, you know, beating myself up thinking, oh, I'm doing everything wrong. And, um, you know, just thank God I didn't quit because the lifestyle that you get to live being a top earner in network marketing, I'm telling you, it's just second to none. So I am incredibly grateful for all of those challenges because, you know, they always say it makes you who you are. So, you know, become proud of the person I am because of the experiences that I went through. That's amazing. And what a story. I mean, your story is, that's one of the reasons that I've had you mentor me over the last two years i use you all the time if you ask our team we have a team of around twenty thousand twenty four thousand and you know one of the key things that we have found that people do not do is a lot of them when they some of them will start you know they want a better life they want to fire their boss they want to become debt free they want to spend more time with their family they want to travel more and give their kids the stuff that they never had and you know what when they start they spend a lot of time trying to figure it out before they begin and they're saying no 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 i have to be really organized before you know i have to i got to learn it all um before they really start to take action and then what will happen is they talk to a few people or whatever it may be and then their enthusiasm wanes and they die off can you maybe address that a little bit please yeah you know i mean i i say the reason why people there's one main reason why people don't do anything once they join and there's one main reason why people you know quit early or, or even quit late I mean the number one reason is, is they get their feelings hurt um, you know they get their feelings hurt or they're afraid of getting their feelings hurt and so it's the fear of the fear of rejection is the number one fear in the world you know I mean people always say it's the fear of public speaking in reality the fear of public speaking is just the fear of being rejected publicly Right. And so, um, 
You know, what, what I always like to do, you know, is a couple things. You know, one is <laughs> the, the way I see our job in network marketing. Our job in network marketing is not to convince people to join our business. You know, that's not what we're selling. You know, if we're selling anything, we're selling time. We're selling 30 minutes or an hour of time to look at our opportunity. So our job is really this. It's to educate people on what we're doing and collect a decision. And you have to get to the point where, you know, you have to realize that not everyone is going to join you. You know, you could have the best opportunity in the world and, no, you know, not everyone's going to do it. There's some people are just skeptical. And listen, we don't want everyone. Because if everyone would join, if network marketing were easy, there would be no opportunity. So you got to get that straight first. Is everyone's like, well, no, networking is hard. Well, yeah, it's hard. That's why there's an opportunity. See, if network marketing were easy, a company would pay out 10% of the revenues to us. But most companies, they're paying out, you know, 40, 50, 60% of the revenues back out to the field. Why do they pay us so much? Because you have to be willing to get over the fear of rejection. You got to be willing to go out and build teams and go through the numbers. So I'm incredibly grateful that it's challenging because that's why the that's why network marketing companies will pay us a fortune if we end up getting good and going out and building big teams. And so number one, be grateful for it. And then two, it's that this is you know, not everyone's going to do it. You could have the best thing in the world. See, when I was in high school, I worked at an amusement park. And at the amusement park, they would give us five employee passes that we could use to give to our friends and family. Well, instead of me giving them to my friends and family, I went out near the front, uh, the front gate. And as people were walking up, I would say, hey, I'm an employee. I've got a free pass. It's $30 to get in. I'll sell you my tickets for $20. It'll save them $10, you know? And so I went out and in 10 minutes, I, you know, I made whatever, $20 times, you know, five. I made $100 in like five minutes, you know? It was so easy. And I was like, wow. So I went to all the other employees um, and I said, hey, do you still have your employee passes? I'd ask everyone I could. And if they had them, I said, listen, I'll pay you $10 a piece. So they'd give me $10. I'd go sell them for 20. I'd double my money. And I had a little business going on. And what I always thought was fascinating is I'd have people come up and I'd say, excuse me, sir, I've got, um, you know, I've got tickets. I'm an employee. I've got tickets. If you want to save $10 going in and people would say, I'm not interested in what you're selling. I'm not interested. And I'd say, okay, it's just the same thing. $10 less. I'm not interested and they'd walk by and I'd watch them go pay $10 more and walk in. And it was just fascinating to me. It's like literally I'm doing them handing you a $10 bill if you're smart enough to take it, but not everyone is smart enough to take it. That's the reality of the situation. So this is a numbers game. And so the way you have to look at it, it's kind of like being a waiter. Chances are you've been out to eat at a restaurant before. And at the end of the you know, meal, typically the waiter or the waitress, they said, would you like some dessert? You want some dessert? And so how many times have we rejected the waiter? Fun, right? All the time we've rejected the waiter. We've said we don't want dessert. We're full, you know, we just don't want it. And so the waiter, do they get offended? They don't get offended. That would be ridiculous. It'd be stupid for them to get offended that you don't want dessert. You know, they don't say, and then they don't beg and plead. They don't say, well, but please, please have dessert. It's really good. No, they don't. They don't go, freaking restaurants, they're all a scam. Desserts don't work. That's crazy. It's ludicrous. It's equally as ludicrous to be personally offended and you show your business to someone and they don't like it. Now there's going to be people who say they don't like it. They don't want to join. They don't have the money. They don't have the time, whatever. Uh, they don't believe they can do it. There's going to be people who say, Oh, those are all, it's a pyramid scheme. Uh, you're going to go to jail. My great aunts, uncles, nephews, cousins, brothers, best friend gotten one of those years ago and lost all his money. You're going to go through that. So here's what we need to do rather than get all personally offended and go crawl in the fetal position. We got to, exercise a little bit of courage. We got to go do it anyway and then do what a waiter does. What do they do? They go to the next table and they say, would you like some dessert? We've got to go to the next person and say, would you like some dessert? See, here's the way I see it. It's kind of like this. There's, if you want to have success, you got to be really good at just flipping cards because in every deck of cards, there are how many aces? 
four aces, right? And so what we're looking for is we're looking for the four aces. The four aces are the people who see this. They get the vision. They're like, oh, wow, this makes sense. I'm in. And they join and they go all the way. Now, you're also going to get some kings and queens and jacks and tens. They're going to join and maybe do a little bit. We like them too. What we're really looking for is the aces. Now, here's the thing. We can realize that. We can get excited. All right, there's four aces out there. But there's also four twos. And you have to go through the four twos typically to get all four aces. You have to go through the threes. You have to go through the fours. You know, the twos, they're the ones who are like, I'm skeptical. Um, you know, they're the ones that go, sounds too good to be true. And so the mistake that networkers make is they go, okay, let me see if I can turn you into an ace. <laughs> You're not going to turn a two into an ace. You know, at best, you might turn a two into a four, a five into a six. I mean, if you're really, really good, you can turn a four into a six, maybe. You're not going to make a two an ace. And so you're going to bang your head against a wall for years like I did because I was trying to turn twos into aces instead of flipping another card and going and find the ace. So that's the way you have to look at it. And everyone's going to have their opinion. See, when you show this, the people that you care about, you're going to go to them and you're going to show it to them. And some are going to like it, some are not going to like it. And what I would recommend you do is to um, kind of create a barrier, a rejection barrier, is when you go to people, you let them know, like, hey, here's why I'm doing this. It's big. I'm all in. But listen, it doesn't matter to me if you want to do it or not. If you love it, great. If you don't love it, that's great, too. Either way, I just wanted to give you the opportunity to see it. Now, if you notice my, my verbiage there, I just wanted to give you the opportunity to see it. You're not being needy. Literally, it's in their best interest. You're doing them a favor. Now, you're not telling them you're doing them a favor, but that's got to be your mindset, right? Yeah. And so you just literally go through the numbers. Now, some people are going to have their opinions, and a lot of times the reason why they have such a strong opinion is because you're being really pushy. You know, but if you're saying, listen, either way is totally cool. If they start giving you any, you know, kind of negativity, it's like, hey, I appreciate you looking. And then you're off to the next person. Don't even allow it into your mind. Just move on. Because here's what I tried doing for years. I tried paying my bills based on the opinions of other people. And you can't pay your bills. Other people's opinions are not going to ever pay your bills. They're not going to pay your mortgage. They're not going to pay your car payment, not your, pay your electricity. They're not going to pay for your vacations, nothing. So as far as I'm concerned, people can take their opinions and do whatever they want with them. See, and people are going to be afraid. They see something like this and they may even know it's good. I mean, anyone in this day and age that has any kind of business sense at all, they know network marketing is a solid vehicle. I mean, the third wealthiest man in the world, Warren Buffett, he owns three network marketing companies. You'd have to be half brain dead not to realize network marketing is solid, but they're going to say it's not solid because they're afraid. They're, they realize they'd have to go show this to people and get rejected. And so they're going to have an opinion. So never denounce your success because cowards have an opinion. You got to just go out there and do it and you got to develop courage. See, you're never going to have a total absence of fear. Fear is never going to totally go away. I mean, fear is there to protect us in a sense. But, you know, fear is, I'm going to encourage people to adopt a different kind of fear. You know, your fear, you know, fear is temporary, regret is forever. You don't want to live your life filled with regret because if you live in fear, what happens is you live the rest of your life in helplessness the rest of your life in helplessness if you stay in fear. You gotta have courage. Courage is having the fear and doing it anyway. So if you're never gonna get rid of fear, have a fear, but be afraid of fear itself. Be, be afraid of being fearful. You know, have that fear of being afraid, yes? So that's why now it's like if I feel afraid, oh no, I'm afraid of living in helplessness the rest of my life. I have to go do it, okay? <laughs> so. <laughs> Keep the fear, just have a different fear. That's my, uh, my advice. Wow, that's, uh, that's amazing. And that's really what goes through everyone's mind that we find is that even Eric Worre talks about you have to be willing to accept the temporary loss of social esteem from ignorant people. And if you can deal with that, he says, and just work consistently towards something like have a good daily method of operation, then you will be successful. Okay, it. so the next, the next question is, you know, we have a lot of people though, now that they never, they've been an employee mentality, they've been employees for a long time, they get home from work, because a lot of people are doing this part time, and they get uh, bogged down with 
NIPA versus IPA. Can you maybe explain um, how they can, maybe a routine or something around that, how, what they should do for a uh, daily method of operation? Yeah, absolutely. So NEPA versus EPA. So NEPA is non-income producing activities. EPA would be income producing activities. And so, um, you know, what happens is you, you really need to develop a little bit of, um, you know, personal motivation. And if we're used to having employee mentality, which most people are, you know, we're used to, you know, having a set schedule. Uh, we're used to, you know, blocking out. We know we've got to be there from nine to five. Otherwise, we lose our job and so you know in a way take that same foot you can take the parts of that and apply it to your network marketing business um, the scheduling you know realize that if you don't schedule the time if you're not blocking out the time usually it's gonna get away from you you're gonna end up not doing it and so if you didn't show up for your job for a day you might be able to get away with it if you didn't show up for two days um, or three days, certainly, you're going to be fired, okay? You're going to lose your job. And so realize this is a real business. So it may cost, I don't know what it costs to join uh, your company. Maybe it's $1,000. But if it's $1,000, the worst thing you can do is treat it like $1,000. Or if it's $2,000, the worst thing you can do is treat it like $2,000. Um, because you get out of it what you put into it. You know, you got to act as if you invested $2 million. Now, if you invested $2 million and you had a real business, if you had a storefront, for instance, obviously, if you don't show up, um, you're going to be out of business. So it's the same thing in network marketing, only you get to at work the hours you want. See, the great thing, one of the greatest things about our, our type of business is it's not a big investment. You know, it's a few hundred to a few thousand dollars at most to get started. The bad part about our business is it's only a few hundred to a few thousand dollars to get started because you treat it as such. And so I'll tell you, when I came into you know, my, for instance, my current network marketing company, when I joined, it wasn't a few hundred dollar decision. I acted as if it was a few million dollar decision. So I'm blocking out, you know, I know every Tuesday night I'm at this event. Every Thursday night I'm at this event. Um, I know I'm doing conference calls. I'm making calls. In fact, um, you know, what I've done a lot over the years is I'll actually block out in my calendars from two to four o'clock, I'm making prospecting calls. I'm scheduling in my planner because for me, it's a real business. So you gotta treat it like a real business and block out your calendar. Now, <laughs> when you're blocking your calendar out, it's EPA, it's income producing activity. So NEPA would be redoing your list. It's resorting your list for the third time. It's organizing your office. It's, um, you know, getting all your uh, files and your folders on your, in your computer exactly the way they need to be. That's never going to make you any money. What are the EPA activities? So EPA activities are, you know, getting someone's phone number. Um, EPA activities are calling someone and inviting them to look at your opportunity. It's presenting your opportunity. It's following up with someone. Uh, and follow-up can turn into a NEPA activity. If you followed up with the same person for four, five, six, seven times, you've taken an EPA activity and turned it into a NEPA activity because it's so much easier to follow up with someone for the 18th time than it is to call a new person because you already have that relationship, right? No, you gotta go realize you're in NEPA if you're calling the same person for the fifth time. Go call a new person. Um, getting a new member started. See, getting a new member started and training them, this is also an EPA activity that can turn into a NEPA activity because what happens is, in many cases, is we enroll someone in our business and not everyone is going to go duplicate and I'll tell you the way my numbers have worked out over the years out of every 10 or so that I've enrolled I get about four who do nothing I get about four who show up and I get about two who are serious now it's give or take I might get one to three who are serious I might get three to five who show up I might get three to five who disappear and do nothing those are just the numbers okay it's just the numbers and so what happens is when you, and, and I call it, I say our whole job in network marketing is so simple. Our job is to sort through the chickens to find the eagles. See, we have a multiple sorting process. The sorting process starts 
with showing our business, you know, showing our opportunity. And so you're sorting to get people in. And always remember, professionals sell, amateurs sort. If you want to get really good, sort through, go get a lot of no's, realize you can't get a lot of yeses without a lot of no's. The way I see it, we actually get paid on the no's. So I'm excited if I get a no because I know that leads me closer to a yes. So we sort to get people to join. And then once the people that we enroll, now we're sorting to figure out who's going to do anything. Thing. And then we have another sorting process. It's the people who do anything that are actually going to become leaders, who are going to get serious and who are really going to go all in. So you've got this multiple sort that you go through. And here's how training can become a NEPA activity is you've got this chicken. So we sort through chickens to find the eagles. And the chickens are never going to turn into eagles. You might have an eagle, uh, an eagle in training. It looks like a chicken, but it's really an eagle in training. Um, but whether it's an eagle in training or it's a chicken, meaning they're not doing anything, you overtrain your person. You're spending two hours getting someone started and you know, you're constantly sitting down, let's have lunch, let me train you more. And you're constant, that's trying to make a chicken fly. They're not gonna fly. And so that's where training can even be a neat activity. And listen, I'm a trainer. I mean, what I love, my calling in life is moving people. Um, it's being able to touch, move, and inspire people and take them to another level. So I believe in training, I mean, as much as probably anyone in the world, anyone in network marketing, but you can't spend hours upon hours upon hours with someone who's never done anything and expect you to train them to death. That's not going to make them go do something. Okay. So, you know, hopefully that kind of answers your question, but, um, you know, the key is, um, it, it, you know, I think is just a numbers game. Well, that's great insight and what a great, uh, help that will be for our team and anybody really looking at this to grow their own stay at home business. So, Speaking about growing, what is the fastest way to grow an organization? And what kind of, what are the best people that we should look for out of those 10? Is there a certain person? I know it sounds like you said no, just sort, but which one would be the best, uh, not from your experience? You know, what, what I'm always looking for is someone who has ambition. I mean, if they've got ambition and work ethic, desire and work ethic, that's what you're looking for. And you're always, you know, kind of looking at people with two eyes. You know, you got one eye of, expectation and positivity, you know, it's like they're going to crush it, you know, and when you're talking with them, you're telling them, you know, you're the one, you're the one, I believe in you, you can absolutely do this. And then you're looking at it from the other eye, you're going, well, you know, because uh, some people talk a big game, you know, oh, yeah, I'm going to go, uh, you know, build it big. It's like the person who tells you you got lucky because they joined your team. <laughs> I always hate that whenever someone says, man, you're going to get rich because I'm on your team. I know they're never going to do anything. Um, you know, so what I always tell people is when, they're, when they talk a big game, I'm saying, you know, I, I hear you. I hear you. I see better than I hear, but I hear you. Okay. So, um, and I, uh, tell me the question again. I started going off. Oh, on yeah, no worries. The question is, so to, what's the fastest way to build our organization and the kind of what are the best people to look for because those people, that's yeah, I those people are people with ambition and again it is a sorting process so I, here's my attitude though what happens is some people I remember uh, going to a uh, um, a presentation or training one time and the speaker who was on stage said I'm I'm only showing it to people who are serious and you can only show it to people who are serious. I typically want to show it to everyone, you know, and here's why is because every dud knows a stud. I've had a lot of chickens who have led me to eagles. You know, I think about a guy that I sponsored, uh, we'll call him Jimmy. So Jimmy joins the business and, you know, he was one of those that was, he showed up, you know, he'd come to trainings here and there. He wasn't serious. He didn't come to most things. He'd show up every once in a while. And so, you know, a lot of people could say, well, he's not someone I'd ever sponsor. Um, I wouldn't want to work with someone like that. Well, you know, he kind of came around the campfire. And I love having a lot of people who are just, you know, they're customers. You know, they're reps, but they're really just customers. They're great. Love on them. Be there for them. Um, that's going to be the bulk of your organization when it gets really big. Um, you know, I had a guy one time who said, I went to all 20 people uh, that were on my team and I said, 
Um, I only want to work with people who are committed to going all the way, who are serious. So either go all the way or quit. And he had everyone on his team quit. <laughs> so no, if you're going to be a chicken, that's fine. I'm, you know, it's fine. It's fine. But you know, this guy, Jimmy, he wasn't a stud. He set up one meeting for me. He set up a meeting with a guy named Glenn. Jimmy never did anything else. Glenn set up one meeting for me that same day with a lady named Terry. Glenn never did anything else. Terry set up one meeting for me a little later that day. Terry never did anything else. Um, and the guy she set up the meeting with was a guy named Mark, and Mark built a team of a few thousand people. So I had a dud, led me to a dud, led me to a dud, led me to a stud. You just never know. So my attitude is I'm going to show it to everyone. Now, who am I going to run with? And this is the key, that who you spend your time with are the people who are actually doing it who are working, who are building, you're spending your time with the eagles, the ones that are ambitious, that have the desire, that want to work. So that's who we're looking for. And sometimes the people who do have a ton of desire and they've got a ton of work ethic, they're not talking a big game. They're not a big mouth frog. They're swift, silent, and deadly. And you don't know who's swift, silent, and deadly. So you just got to show it to everyone who comes along. You know, and if they show interest, hey, I'm going to show them because you, you can't judge people based on appearances. And in many cases, you can't judge people on what they say because, you know, I mean, I've got some people who they're not the most charismatic people in the world. They can't really move a crowd, but man, can they produce. I mean, they're just willing to outwork everyone. So the key is show it to everyone. You're obviously looking for people who are ambitious, who are sharp. You know, if you're getting, I don't have the money a lot, you're sponsoring down. You know, so you're looking for people who are ambitious, who are willing to work, that have some credibility, um, that are a little bit more upwardly mobile. You know, if you're looking at generally who is it that's going to, you know, come in and build the business, it's, you know, if you got someone who's successful already, well, there's a reason why they're successful already. You know, usually they're going to be the ones who are going to do better, but not always. I've got a lot of people over the years who, man, they were dead broke. Me, as an example, I was working as a waiter, living at home with my mom, driving a beat up car. And I went from, I, and I was doing network marketing on the side and I finally found, you know, I got enrolled by a guy who was an amazing mentor and you know, it was everything finally came together and I went and built, built a team of 10,000 people in two years. I went from living at home with my mom, making three, 400 a week as a waiter to making 2,000 a week within 90 days and 10,000 a week within six months. But I look like a chicken. I look like a dud, but you couldn't, you, you can't measure someone's heart. Really good. Um, you know how a lot of people will join companies and they're cruising along and I've got a few uh, mentors that I'm using right now, like Robert Hollis and Eric Warre, and even Robert has had this happen. And so did uh, Eric where what, and we, our company's doing the same thing. What happens when the company makes some great positive changes and you have a team that is all just heard about these changes as well as leaders. And also just as ordinary entrepreneurs in the field now, what is our role? Because I know the tendency is to, you know, try and figure it out. You stay confused. You start to procrastinate. How should we deal with this? And the changes, by the way, are extremely positive. Yeah. So here, here's my philosophy. Momentum in network marketing is all about one word. And that one word is belief. Okay. So it's all about transferring belief to your organization. And one, it, you've got to look at, when there's new things that come out, you call them a change, you call them an enhancement, whatever it is. But when something comes out, it is the absolute best excuse in the world to go transfer belief. Why? Because people want something new. They want something fresh. Things get old. They get stale. And so, you know, every great company out there, every great company out there, they're changing things up a bit. If you look at companies like New Skin, you know, I'm not part of New Skin, but, you know, New Skin, I think they do about three or four billion dollars a year. You know, they're, why they had so much success, why they become one of those giants is because they're always mixing things up. And what happens is, this is an analogy my mentor gave me. He said, if you keep people around 
the campfire, they're hot, they're warm. It feels good around the campfire. If they get away from the campfire, then it gets cold. They forget about their dreams and their goals, and then they just fade away. And so we're always looking, leaders are, I'm always looking for a reason to circle the wagons and bring people back around the campfire. So, you know, it's reaching out to the people in your group, reaching out to the people who haven't done anything in a while, reaching out to maybe uh, some people that you showed the business to in the past and it wasn't the right time or whatever. It's a reason to call them back and go, oh my God, I've got to tell you about what's going on. Um, it's calling the people in your group. Oh my God, I got to tell you what's going on. And so when there's a new change, you can do one of two things is you can go as a leader, you can go into analytical mode. You can try and paralysis of analysis and figure everything out. And how am I going to do this? Or you can say, wow, awesome. This is an opportunity to build massive belief because it's an opportunity to bring everyone together to do more conference calls, to do more presentations, to do more trainings because you're, and you're just bringing people back around the campfire, back around the campfire, back around the campfire. And I'm praying, you know, with my company, I'm always praying that about every six to nine months, something is coming as a change because I'm going to use that to rally the troops. And so here's what great leaders do. If you look at Martin Luther King, what Martin Luther King Jr. did is he promoted a vision. He had a dream and he was transferring that dream. I just watched the movie on the plane the other day, Selma, and I listened to his talks and you know a lot of his speeches. In fact, I wanna find a, a book with a bunch of his speeches because he was transferring his dream, his emotion, and his vision of what America could be, he was transferring that to his following. And so if you've got a following of, with you, 24,000 people, if you've got a following of 1,000, if you've got a following of two or one person, then you've got to go transfer that vision. You've got to build belief. Number one, it starts from you getting excited. If you read a book, um, Primal Leadership by Daniel Goleman, it talks about how great leaders have emotional intelligence. They're able to transfer emotion to their organization. And the way that you do that is you open up, you genuinely share your excitement and you let it out. So sometimes we try to be cool. You know, we want to be reserved and professional. In network marketing, professional, that doesn't move people. If you look at the great leaders of network marketing, they're people who got excited and transferred emotion to people. So that's what you want to do. When there's a change that comes up, get excited because it's an opportunity to go build massive belief and paint the vision of your company, paint the vision of where you're headed. And so it's time to get on fire. You should be, if you've got any kind of a team, I mean, block out an hour or two of your time to go circle the wagon, bring people back around the campfire and share your excitement, share your enthusiasm, start doing more webinars, start doing more conference calls, do more trainings, and use that as a reason to get people excited who maybe not weren't so excited before. So that's my take on it. I think it's a huge blessing. Oh, awesome. And so that's really a great suggestion for everyone to get out of a rut. So, and... Do you have that, any thoughts on, uh, and we, we're coming close to our time allotted here, so we're going to, I'm going to. Yeah, try getting out of a rut, I, I'd love to share. So, you know, I know we are running short, but um, I'm going to draw something out here if, uh, if I can find the marker. <laughs> Maybe my pen will work. So here, here's the thing. If you, if you uh, are at a plateau, if you're, in a plateau or you're in a rut, if you can't seem to change your situation, change yourself. If you can't change, seem to change your situation, change yourself because the law of the lid is always in effect. See, you've got a lid of leadership. And John Maxwell talks about this in his book, 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, is your income is never gonna grow beyond your level of leadership. It can also be said your income is never going to grow beyond who you are as a person. So if you want to grow your income, grow your leadership and grow who you are as a person. So recommit to growing yourself. And what I've always believed is if I want to build a business, I got to build myself. See, if you empty your wallet into your mind, your mind will fill up your wallet. Uh, Jim Rohn, he said, work as hard on yourself as you do on your business. That is the key of growing yourself. And when you grow 
yourself and you grow your leadership, you can't help but have your success rise up to it. See, the reason why, once I finally realized this, over five years, I struggled and I struggled and I struggled, but what I was doing, this is what I did right, is I continually invested in my mind. I remember investing in a Tony Robbins seminar. It was um, three seminars for $10,000. It was Master University, and when I saw it, I didn't have the money, and I got mad at myself that I didn't have the money, because, it, and I said, if I, it, this is a problem that I don't have $10,000 to invest in myself. And so I'll tell you the biggest reason why I spent the $10,000 is because I didn't have it. And so I put it on like three different credit cards. I figured it out. I went and it was a huge blessing. I mean, it, it had me become who I am. And so that's the thing is always recommit. Now, the other thing that is true, um, my, uh, my drawing here, if we can make this work, is success kind of works like this in network marketing. Okay. Is, you know, and sometimes this line can be flat for a while, you know, and then you end up having some success. Okay. It goes up. Can you see that? Okay, Richard? Yeah. No, we can't. Okay success and it always ends up going backwards. I've never had it not go backwards. It, it's always gone backwards and this is where we lose most people. I call this area the valley of death. Okay, this is the valley of death in network marketing and every leader goes through it. Every, leader, every single leader I've ever met myself over and over and over. I've been through the valley of death more times than I can count <laughs> and the first time it was really hard, the second time it was really hard, the third time it was a little easier, the fourth, you know, it gets easier. And if you understand it logically, you know you can get out of the valley of death. Now, how do you get out of the valley of death? You just keep doing the, or the actions. You just keep showing the business to people. You just keep enrolling people. You know, I look at, um, in fact, um, one of my recent teams, you know, I got it up to about 400 and some odd people and then it went down to 162. I lost a bunch. And I just, I, I was frustrated, but I said, you know what? That's just the valley of death. I can let it kill me or I can just keep walking. And if you keep walking, you're gonna get through. It's kind of like I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro last year and we went up to 15,000 feet and then we had to go down to 13,000 feet to get back to 15,000 feet. I'm like, man, we just lost 2,000 feet. Sometimes you have to go down in order to get up. You just have to keep walking. If you keep walking, you're going to find the leaders because the aces are there if you'll just keep flipping cards. Uh, brilliant. A couple of uh, last things here. I know in our business, we want to become so close to fearless as possible to do our business. And you talked about that being the mindset. Secondly, we got to develop the skills so we can start running. And that's important. And the third is a, a really good game plan that we got to establish. Now, talking about the skills, one of, the, one of our leaders just asked me a little while ago, what do we do when people really want to change their circumstances and they are exposed, we talk to them, and then they don't go to the next step or they pull what I like to call the Houdini Act. They disappear. They're like gone off the face of the planet. So listen, when they disappear, that was the chicken. You know, there's a great cassette. It's Jim Rohn's Building Your Network Marketing Business. And, um, you know, he talks about planting seeds. Sometimes when you plant seeds, it lands on fertile ground and it grows. Sometimes it lands on rocky ground and it doesn't grow. Sometimes the birds get them. <laughs> so <laughs> the birds are going to get okay. them. You know, it's like in my back office, I have a cancellation report. I've never once looked at it. I mean, six years, 800,000, you know, members, I, I've just never looked at it. Not, not once. I haven't looked at I don't. I don't even know where it is in the back office because I'm more worried about building new leaders. So all you can do is all you can do. That's another great book by uh, A.L. Williams. All you can do is all you can do, but all you can do is enough. And so, you know, you, you definitely want to have a system. I know you guys have a system of, you know, three-way calls. You've got video presentations, one-on-ones, two-on-ones. You do home meetings and, you know, events and things like that. I mean, you just plug people in. And when you identify a leader, when you identify someone who's a star, then, you know, you move in with them. Um, maybe not necessarily into their house, but you're on the phone with them all the time. You're building a relationship. It's not just about the business. You're building a relationship. You're investing in them and you're building them. You're making sure they're committing to personal development and you do your best. There's going to be people who are uncoachable. 
And unfortunately, the people who are uncoachable, they're just never going to make big money. Their ego is always going to be bigger than their bank account. And sometimes you have to give them enough rope to hang themselves. And inevitably, they do. Uh, you know, they're not going to follow the system. They're going to reinvent the wheel. They go do that. Uh, they fail and quit or they fail, smarten up and come back. I literally just had a lady. She came in, um, rock the house, you know, put in like, I don't know, 20, 20 personals her first month, something like that. Totally uncoachable. Wouldn't do any of the stuff I'm telling her. She hung herself basically. She was gone for a couple months. She just came back and said, I'm willing to learn from my mistakes. Whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. And now she has the potential to be great because she's, you know, going to learn how to do it the right way. Um, but that's just the nature of the game. Don't think you're doing something wrong necessarily because that's just going to happen. I don't care how good you are. I've been doing this 20 years and it still happens to me. So, and I know we only have a couple minutes. I wish, um, I wish we had more time. I actually have another um, webinar, another Skype call actually, Skype slash webinar that I've got to do here in two minutes. Um, one minute now. So I appreciate you having me on. You know, I mean, I, I do some free training. If anyone wants, I do um, a couple times a week, uh, three, at least three videos a week. If you go to mattmorris.com, you can put your name and email address in there. You'll get free content from me. Um, my fan page, I post, I think, five videos a week on that fan page. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash the unemployed millionaire. And if anyone is really like, if, if you really want to get to, you know, million dollar status in network marketing, I have a course that's not for everyone. You know, if your goal is just to make two, three hundred dollars a month or even two or three thousand dollars a month, this is information overkill. Uh, I basically, every, Every week I get contacted. Now every day people are asking me for mentorship and it's just impossible. I don't even have time to mentor everyone on my team. I'd love to, I just can't. So I decided to do what the next best thing was to create a, uh, a video coaching series. And so I basically took 20 years of what I've learned in network marketing and distilled it down into the best of the best. Now it's hours and hours and hours of training. Um, anyone who does, it's called Millionaire School. You get lifetime access to it. Uh, you know, money back guarantee, you name it. Um, if anyone wants to do that, I, I've, I have, haven't yet released it to the public. I do have a page that um, I've got an advertising team. They're kind of testing it out. If anyone wants to learn the details about it, you can go to lifestylefreedomsystem.com, lifestylefreedomsystem.com forward slash millionaire dash school. So millionaire dash school, lifestylefreedomsystem.com forward slash millionaire dash school. Um, you know, it, it is, uh, you'll learn a ton. I go through the psychology. I, I explain in exact detail behavioral science. So everyone's like, think positive, think positive. In most cases, that's BS. You can't just tell people to think positive. You got to give them the logic behind it. And so I go deep into the science of the mind. And if you don't understand how to, how to create the right belief system, you're going to fail forever. That's the reality of it. And if you don't understand how to train your organization on behavioral psychology, um, they're going to fail. And so what makes you masterful is really understanding it here. So I believe it's all an inner game. And I give a ton of tactics. I mean, I go through... Uh, I think it's 11 different ways to handle the money objection, nine ways to handle I've got to talk to my spouse, five or six ways to handle um, I've got to think about it, uh, five ways to handle I've got to do my research. I mean, it's the best closing. You'll never see any closing program better. It is, I've never seen anything like it. Uh, it is the best of the best with all humbleness aside. Um, you know, I go through inviting. I give all the strategies that I've used to build a team of 800,000 people in the last um, in the last six years. So uh, it's awesome. You can take a look at it. If, if you're really, really committed to going to the highest levels, you wouldn't want to have everyone on your team uh, go through it because it's just too much advanced information. But uh, if you're really serious, then it would be for you for sure. So uh, Richard, again, thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, thank you so much, Matt. I will definitely be going to lifestyle, lifestylefreedomsystem.com forward slash millionaire dash school. I will be ordering that myself. I also love the fact that you've taken the time to give our team some great insights on how to do this. And really anybody who wants to be successful at, at a home-based business and they want to really become a great entrepreneur and buy their time back. Thank you again. I know you got to fly, so do I, and you know, let's, here's to getting way more eagles.
Thanks a lot. <laughs> All right. Thanks, brother. Appreciate Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.